All right, hi guys, this is Dr. McGrath and Violet again. Um, and now we are going to talk about what happens after that CD4 T cell has been activated by an extracellular antigen. So what this means is that we have a whole bunch of bacteria or something foreign in the body floating around and the first and second line defenses have not cleared it. This CD4 T helper cell has been activated He's sitting here in the lymph nodes secreting a bunch of cytokines um, and just going nuts. Like, hey, something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. So in addition, we can have, since we have a bunch of this extracellular antigen, we can have some of the extracellular antigen get in here into the lymph node. So I have the bacteria coming in here into the lymph node. And some of his antigens will be in here as well. And so if these antigens, uh, they'll go in and there's B cells in the lymph node, a whole bunch of them, and one of them will invariably recognize this antigen. And what he'll do is he will digest and degrade this antigen, and then he will present it on his MHC class 2 molecule. He will then come over here to the CD4 helper T cell, the C4 will recognize the MHC class 2, and the TCR will look at the antigen. So the B cell is basically coming over here to the T cell and being like, hey, I found this thing. Is this okay? Is this a bad thing, a good thing? Well, the T cell's there, and he's like, oh my God. The dendritic cell was in here a little while ago. He showed me this. This is not good. And the way he's telling him that is because he's secreting all these cytokines, all right? So when this T helper cell secretes all these cytokines telling the B cell, yes, whatever you've got is bad. So what you have recognized is an invading pathogen. The B cell will then be selected for clonal expansion. The B cell will then make a bunch of memory cells. So these cells are genetically identical to the B cell and they have the same antibody on their surface. So the next time that that antigen comes in our body, because chances are we'll see it again if it's our in our environment, then we'll have not just one B cell that'll recognize it, but a bunch. In addition, he will also clonally expand into plasma cells. These plasma cells are antibody secreting cells. The memory cells are long lived. They, li they can stay there for the rest of your life. The plasma cells don't last as long. The job of the plasma cell is to be secreting thousands and thousands of antibodies per minute. Now, why do we need all those antibodies? Well, the antibodies can contribute to opsonization because they recognize that pathogen and we know we have a lot of that pathogen in the body. They can clump up the bacteria so that um, they're bigger clumps of them. Instead of trying to clear 10,000 individual things, we clear one big thing that's 10,000 pieces together. That's easier for our body to see. Can also contribute to antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity and can inactivate things. They can also make complement activation happen. So these antibodies are out there doing a whole bunch of stuff. The reason the plasma cells are short lived is we want the antibodies when we have the pathogen. But once the pathogen is cleared, we don't want the antibodies anymore. We don't want to be making thousands and thousands of antibodies for something we were sick with a couple months ago. We only need the antibodies when we need them. So that's why the plasma cells are short-lived. Next video, we're going to talk about what happens when we get an intracellular infection. All this stuff that we've talked about so far is for extracellular stuff. We talked about the dendritic cell eating an extracellular pathogen and presenting it on its MHC2. We also talked about the B cell encountering an extracellular pathogen and presenting it on its MHC2 MHC2 to the T helper cell. Next, we're going to talk about intracellular pathogens and what happens with those. Bye guys.